Now that we've covered the basics of the physics behavior and you understand how to get it working, let's take a look at some of the more advanced capabilities of objects with the physics behavior applied. In the last video, we covered how to get an object set up with the physics behavior and how to get it interacting with the environment around it. This time, I'd like to talk about how to get our objects moving using forces and impulses. With other behaviors, we move an object by simply adding or subtracting to the object's x or y coordinates. With the physics behavior, we use forces and impulses to put an object into motion. So, what is the difference between a force and an impulse? A force is something that changes an object's speed or direction and is used over time to give an object constant acceleration. Think of gravity. Gravity is a downward force, always causing you to accelerate towards the ground. Another example would be when pressing the gas on a car object. A force is applied that pushes the objects forward, accelerating whenever the gas is down. When the gas is released, the force is no longer being applied. An impulse, however, is more like an impact between two objects. Consider a baseball bat colliding with a baseball. As the bat hits the ball, an impulse is applied to the ball, causing a jolt of acceleration. After that initial impulse, though, the ball begins to slow down until it comes to a stop. To put it simply, a force speeds an object up gradually and continually over time, while an impulse gives a single spike of acceleration immediately getting the object up to speed and then gradually slowing down over time. Let's take a look at a force and an impulse with physics objects. Right now, I just have this triangle object with a physics behavior applied, as well as a ground object also with a physics behavior, and its immovable property set to yes. Right now, if I previewed the layout, nothing would happen since the triangle is sitting on the ground. I want to use a force to drive this triangle upwards, kind of like a rocket. Let's switch to the event sheet and apply a force to the triangle. Remember, we want a force to be continually applied over time. So for this example, let's apply the force every tick. Click Add Event and choose System, and select Every Tick from under the General category. I'll click Add Action and select the triangle object. Scroll down to Physics Forces. We've got three options for adding a force to the object. Apply force, apply force at an angle, and apply force towards position. Apply force at an angle allows you to specify an angle between 0 and 360 degrees, and apply a force moving the object towards that angle. Apply force towards a position is very similar, except it takes specific x and y coordinates, and applies a force towards those coordinates. Last, the option we're going to use is just Apply Force. This allows you to set a specific force in the X or Y axis. Because we want this triangle to take off like a rocket, we need it to move up, which means we use the Y axis. And we need to use a negative value since Y equals zero at the top of the screen. So under Force Y, I'll put negative five. Now, every tick, a force of negative five will be applied, speeding the object up as it does. I'll preview the layout, and you can see the object takes off like a rocket. Next, let's take a look at an impulse in action. I'll drag out an instance of the box object. It also has the physics behavior applied with the default settings. Remember, a force is continuously applied, while an impulse is a one-off impact. I'm going to give an impulse to this box whenever it's clicked by the mouse. In the event sheet, add a new event using the mouse object. Then, add an action using the box object and scroll down to Physics Forces. Just like with force, we have three options. Apply Impulse, Apply Impulse at an angle, and Apply Impulse towards a position. These all behave just like their force counterparts, except they apply a singular impulse instead of a continuous force. What I want to do is apply an impulse at an angle. I'll set the impulse strength to be pretty low. 
too should be good. Then I'll use an angle of 270 degrees, which will move the box straight up. So when the box is clicked, an impulse with a strength of 2 is applied, pushing the object straight up into the air. Let's take a look. When I click, an impulse is applied. If I keep clicking, I can move the box to the top of the screen. When these forces and impulses are applied, they are applied to the object's origin point. We can use the origin point, or we can specify an alternate image point to apply the force or impulse to. The box's origin point is directly in the center of the box. Let's see what would happen if we add an image point to the bottom corner of the object. Now, I'll just change the image point that Apply Impulse Action uses. Now, when I click on the box, an impulse is applied to the corner, causing it to go into a spin. The next thing we can do with the physics objects is apply torque to them. Torque is a rotational force, meaning that by applying torque to an object, you can rotate it, either clockwise or counterclockwise. To demonstrate torque, I'll add this ball object to the layout. It also has the physics behavior added, with its default values. I do need to change the collision mask to circle, since we're using a round object. In the event sheet, I'll add another event, this time using the keyboard object, and choose Key is Down. I'll select the space bar. Now, when the space bar is down, I want to rotate the ball by applying torque to it. Let's add an action and choose the ball object and scroll down to Physics Torque. Here we also have three options, each similar to their force and impulse counterparts. We'll just use Apply Torque. Here, you can set the strength of the torque, or how fast it will rotate. You can also specify if the object should rotate clockwise or counterclockwise by using a positive or negative value here. Positive values will rotate clockwise, while negative values rotate counterclockwise. I'll set it to 200. If I preview the layout and hold the spacebar down, the ball rotates clockwise and actually rolls to the right. Those are the movements that you can make with the physics behavior. Remember, a force is continuously applied acceleration, while an impulse is a one-off burst of acceleration. Finally, torque is basically rotational force. We have one more topic to discuss when it comes to the physics behavior, and that's joints. We can join two objects together at a joint. I'm not going to go too in-depth on joints, but I'd like to set one up so you can see how they work. I'll set the box next to the triangle, and then we'll join them together. In the event sheet, add an event. Select System, and choose On Start of Layout. Then, I'll add an action using the triangle, and scroll down to Physics, Joints. I'll choose Create Revolute Joint. I'll join it to the box using its default image point. Now, when I preview the layout, the triangle is joined to the box, and the box is preventing it from taking off like it did before. And you can see they are hinged together. There's so much you can do with joints, so make sure to experiment with them. Adding the physics behavior to an object gives it so much more functionality. It really is a lot of fun playing with these objects and getting them to behave the way you'd like. We've seen how we can use forces, impulses, and torque to move the objects around the level, and how we can use joints to join objects together, allowing them to become part of a larger object with even more functionality. Have fun experimenting with these and see what kinds of projects you can come up with.